Hey guys, it's Jessica and today I've got my best and worst of Elf. I've done this kind of a video like every year since I started my channel um, and as Elf releases more and more products, you know, some of their products get discontinued, etc. I've tried a lot. Um, so I recently placed an order with Elf. I did a haul maybe in November or December. Um, I just went on their website and went crazy in the new section and I even went, I think I went through every single product on their website, which is a lot. What you see in stores from Elf, nothing compared to what they offer online. Um, so they've had a lot of new stuff, some old loves of mine as well that they still sell. So I'm going to go through my best and the worst in my opinion. If you enjoy this kind of a video, definitely give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you like. Let's go ahead and get into it. I'm already out of breath. I just finished filming my physician's formula best and worst as well. And I have tons of those products. So if that video is up, I will link it below. If not, subscribe and stay tuned because it will be up soon. Um, but let's get into some e.l.f. So, oh my gosh. Let's start with something I was surprised how much I liked. And that is their little eyeshadow duos. These are, I think they call them their best friend duos. This is in the shade T for two. I have gotten more compliments wearing this duo than like I've ever gotten. I remember my friend Sarah was in town and we went to the mall and like the lady at Tivana, was it Tivana? David's Tea. She was like, I love your eyeshadow. I'm like, thank you. And then I'm thinking like, what am I wearing? On my eyes? It was just this. It was just this kind of champagne colored shimmer. And here's the thing. These aren't, even, they don't even swatch that well. But they really do look so, yeah, you can barely see them. They look so nice on the eyes. I think these colors, especially if you're near my skin tone, look like you hardly tried, but there's like a slight shimmer. And there's something about that that really does look nice. And this is not something, you know, it's nothing like if I compared this to like swatching any other palette I have, this does not compare. Like it doesn't seem like it's very nice, but it just looks really nice on the eyes. I can't describe it. This other one I really like is called Peach Squad. And it's got like a matte, kind of a peach color, and then a shimmery, darker gold. Um, again, it swatches a little bit better than the other ones, but these look so pretty together. You could totally pair all four, all four of these shades together if you wanted, whatever. But really, really inexpensive, of course, in true elf style. And I was actually pretty impressed, even though upon first glance, they don't seem very nice. Now, if you're wanting like a crazy pack a punch color, those are not going to be your best friend. But if you just want like a slight wash of something, then you'll like it. I'm making it sound worse, but that, I mean, that genuinely is what it is. I'm wearing a decent amount of this on my face today, so I'll definitely tell you what I'm wearing as we go. Um, so, continuing on with eyeshadow, I have their Mad for Matte palette. So there's their original, and then there's their Mad for Matte 2. So these are all matte shadows. I think these are right around $10 actually really really nice um they're like i said all matte they really did a good job getting a nice range of colors um, again these don't swatch like crazily amazing but they are so nice on the eyes they blend the way you want them to blend and so for me i'm like we're such a swatch culture here in the youtube beauty community you know we always look at swatches and say oh it looks terrible but really, you're not necessarily swatching these on your eyes. Maybe for a lid shade, you're, you know, literally swatching it. But for everything else, you're using a brush because that's what brushes were intended for. And I think these apply so beautifully. I think they blend really well. So this is kind of a classic matte palette. It's got deeper, lighter colors, medium colors. Their matte for matte 2 definitely has some more color to it. So definitely has some of those warmer shades if you're really into that. But there are enough really wearable shades that, you know, you don't have to be thrown off by like the purple and the red because the rest of them are so wearable. I think you'd get more wear out of this than you would think. Does that make sense? So I really, I actually today, okay, so on my eyes I'm wearing this palette other than the shimmer. It's another e.l.f. product I'll talk about in a second. But I'm wearing in the crease this kind of, um, taupey shade and then I put some of the red in the outer corner. I use a little bit of this peachy shade as well just to blend it all together and then I have this kind of cream shade on my brow bone. So really really impressed. Oh and I used this brown on my lower lash line a little bit to smudge out that black. Very very impressive stuff for a pretty good price point. On my brows today this one surprised me how much I liked it. This is the e.l.f. Ultra Precise Brow Pencil. I have it in medium brown. Very, very thin, totally just like the Anastasia Brow Wiz, you guys. I've learned over the years after trying a lot of brow products, including the Anastasia Brow Wiz, 
there's nothing that special about that anymore because everyone's coming out with these thin ones but also the consistency of that is exactly the same as this like i don't notice any difference about the blendability the creaminess they're the same so i would totally totally repurchase this this is what i used in my brows today you can get really precise on like the tail of your brow you can make it look like a brush you could totally just color it in and then the spoolie is nice and small just like the anastasia one and it really pulls the color through your brows i was very impressed with this very 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 impressed this is totally something that when i use up i could see myself buying again the shade medium brown is perfect for me it doesn't really pull too warm it's not too dark, it's just right in between. Um, something I really, really like from e.l.f. is their Glow Lotion. Um, this is in the shade Natural, oh uh, no, sorry. Natural Glow Lotion and it's called Brightening Rose. This is something that really everyone, let me wipe these swatches off. Every brand is coming out with a kind of glowy, dewy, brightening kind of a primer or moisturizer. They're kind of the same thing. I really like this. Do I think this is any better than like all the other brands? No, I feel like all of them are kind of doing the same thing. I love what all of them do. But if you're looking for one and you're already placing an e.l.f. order or you see it in store, I absolutely would recommend this. It looks nice, especially if you have normal to dry skin. I just put it all over and then I put on, you know, you could put on a primer on top. I use it sometimes just as my primer, just as a moisturizing primer and then put a foundation on top and it really does a nice job of helping your skin kind of glow from within. You'd be surprised like if you did your half your face with it and half your face without it, you do notice a difference. But it's not so glowy that you're like looking greasy. Now if you have oily skin, I don't know. Um, I don't think this adds so much that it would look super greasy, but at the same time, if your skin's already predisposed to kind of have that oil, it might not look as nice on your skin. Can I just tell you what's on my lips? It's not an e.l.f. product, but I want to tell you anyway. In case you don't see my Physicians Formula video, there are a lot of new products from them that are amazing. This is one of them. This is their The Healthy Lip Velvet Finish, and it's in the shade Vitamin Beat. This is the most comfortable lip color ever. It like dries down, but it still has a little transfer, so it's it feels like your lips. Like, it's so... It's so soft. I, I like keep looking in the mirror here and I'm like, I love this stuff. So definitely look out for this in your, wherever your store, whatever store sells Physicians Formula. I actually bought it on online on their website. Is it okay that I take my hair down? My hair is kind of like, you ever get a headache from like wearing your hair out? And this is only like what I always call some up and some down. <laughs> my mom got me in that trend of calling it that. But it's just giving me a headache. And I i was going to keep wearing it to the end. And I'm like, I don't think I can make it that long. All right. So um, continuing on, um, some skincare from them I really, really like. Um, e.l.f., their Beauty Shield line. I've really liked a lot from that line. But this is something that really stood out. This is their Vitamin C Pollution Prevention Serum. I only have a little bit left. I love putting this on as like my first step on my face in the morning before makeup. It sets into your, it sinks into your face really quickly, but it's a nice vitamin C serum. I feel like it just kind of brightens my skin and it gives something good in my skin before I put foundation and all that kind of stuff on it that maybe is not so good for your skin. I love this stuff and I love the idea that it's kind of like, you know, those environmental stressors that are out there that are getting into your skin. It's at least one protective layer against that and I love that about it. I remember, and I probably mentioned this in a video before, I had a, um, like a makeup class I was taking uh, at, in college. I remember her saying, you never ever want to go outside, period, with nothing on your face. You need something protecting your skin from the environment whether that's the sun, whether that's, you know, just the crap that's in the air, the pollution, you always need something as a barrier on your face. And so this, I literally every morning that I use this, I think of her saying that, but I totally agree. You know, the more I've learned about our skin, the more it's so true. Everything just gets into there. Um, anyway, another product from e.l.f. I really like kind of skincare is their prep and hydrate balm. I actually use this today. My, um, Concealer was looking a little, it's still kind of looking a little, and it's actually an e.l.f. product I'm going to talk about that did it, but sometimes I'll just grab a little bit of this and push it into there. It depends on the concealer. Sometimes it can kind of make the concealer move, um, but this is also just really nice for just sticking all over your face as a quick moisturizing layer before you start putting on primer, foundation, etc. That's how I use it. Um, 
Elf used to have that one like moisture stick. They might still sell it. That's a little bit better for like tapping into that area. This is not quite, this is a little bit maybe too hydrating and that's why it moves it around a little bit. Um, so a kind of, it's like a good product but a bad product <laughs> is this Elf, I don't even know what it's called. I will of course have these listed and linked in the order I mentioned them below. Um, but it's kind of like a concealing powder and it's in the shade Banana. It says it's for deep tone, but it, I mean, it worked for me. I used another one of their products. This is like this little pyramid shaped, kind of diamond shaped sponge. And I actually dipped this into it. And I like the sponge only for like setting your under eye. I really did not like it for anything else. Um, just because it's got that really tight corner you can really get into. Here's the thing. This actually has really nice coverage. So if you're trying to bright your, brighten your under eye, this does a fantastic job. However, it definitely makes your under eye look older. If you've got any sort of like fine line, anything, it's going to show that. And I'm looking in the mirror from a foot and a half away and I can see my fine lines because of this. So something to keep in mind, it definitely brightens, but if you have any issues in your under eye other than just like, you know, the color wanting to be brightened, you will see it with this. So it's one of those things that I'm like, I'll probably eventually declutter because I don't like that. I don't want to look older than I am. I think I'd rather be not as bright under there and not look as old. You know what I mean? So something to keep in mind. It does its job, but it definitely has some drawbacks. I mean, so like I said, this sponge, I really have only used it for that. I tried it with my face. I've tried it for contour. It just didn't do the job well, but for that, it definitely does okay. I'll even use it dry sometimes and it's fine. Do I think you need to run out and buy this though? No. So what is on my eyes today? is an old favorite. It's the e.l.f. like long lasting lustrous shadow in Soiree. Kind of a creamy shadow. It's definitely got some glitter and shimmer. So I put it on top of a very white primer just on my lid to make it stand out a little bit more and I do think it helped. Um, I just love this shade. I love that there's like glitter and shimmer in it but it's suspended in the cream so it doesn't, there's never ever glitter fallout. That is awesome. So they have a couple of shades and this just happens to be the only one I own because it was just my favorite. It was the one I reached for all the time. This is the second one of these I've owned. I tore through one of them. You do have to be careful if you get too much of a glop because it is kind of a whipped creamy kind of a feel. Um, if you get too much, it'll kind of pill up on your eye because it's just too much. So you do, you know, kind of swirl it as if it's like a more like a powder and it'll apply much more evenly. But I really, really do like this, but you have to use I've learned a white primer underneath and that's what really gets the job done. I really like the NYX white eye primer. They have like the milk jumbo eye pencil, but also they have the pot. That's a white eye primer. If you use a thin layer of that just on the lid, it looks perfect. Really, that works very well. That's my favorite way to apply any bolder colored shadow. I mean, this isn't super bold. Next up, speaking of eye primers, one that I just wanted more from was the e.l.f. Pro Eyeshadow Primer. Um, I loved the kind of more industrial tube. I don't know why I was talking about that in the haul too. I don't know why I like that. It's kind of a creamy, definitely a very soft velvety feel to it when you blend it in, but that's about it. It really does not hold shadow. It doesn't have that tackiness you need. Um, it was just kind of an odd primer. I feel like this would almost be a better face primer than it would eye primer because with shadow, you really needed to stay exactly where you put it. And, well, I guess that's true for anything. Regardless, I just wasn't impressed with the um, longevity of it. I felt like it really didn't do much. It, I don't know, it just, it didn't work for me. And I usually can use most eye primers with no problem and this is one that I just wasn't impressed with. I really have not felt found an e.l.f. eye primer that I've really fallen in love with. Oh, another thing, just kind of a fun one I wanted to throw in, their e.l.f. eye refresh, a really cooling kind of a, I don't even know what's in it, but it just feels really nice on the eye. Again, do I think it's having long-term skincare benefits to my under eye region? No, but does it feel really nice in the morning to wake you up? Yes, and that's why I like it. It, it helps me feel more awake, whether it's actually doing anything or not, probably not. It's probably a placebo effect, but I really like the feel of it. And so I'm like, that's all right. It's, it's, like, it's like giving your head a massage when you have a headache. Is it giving you a long-term benefit? No, but does it feel good in the moment? Yeah, that's why we do it. So same thing. That was a, actually a really good example, Jessica. Good job. Next up, something I'm wearing on my brow bone today. These are the e.l.f. Targeted Natural Glow Sticks. I have two shades. I have Fresh Morning Dew, which is like a kind of clear, I don't even want to say white. It really is more like clear. It looks white. And then there's a more pinkish hue. This is Pink Pearl Glow. This one definitely has a little more pigment to it. 
This, I mean, you could put it like on the tip of your nose. Here, I'll put a little bit and just kind of blend it in. You could put it um, as like a highlight. I literally took it and just put it right on my brow when I can put a little more on and just kind of blended it in that way. And I feel like it's just such an easy, it blends so well that it's perfect for that. And that's how I found myself reaching for this the most versus, you know, kind of drawing that line. I do think it looks okay like that. I just like it better for those kinds of regions. Cause like I said, it's a targeted highlighting stick. So it's perfect for that. Um, I would, like I said, recommend the pink pearl glow over the clear one. The clear one is really just looks like a gloss. I don't think it will give the effect that you want it to, unless you're wanting more of a glossy look. Like maybe you just want glossy lids. I don't know. I've never tried it that way. I don't know if that would actually give the effect you'd want or not, but, um, yeah, so I the clear one kind of a dud, but this one I definitely really liked for those. An old favorite I'm gonna mention just really quickly, the e.l.f. Studio Blushes, I like all of them, but my favorite is Mellow Mauve. I bought a new one. That's what's on my cheeks today. It's just a very standard kind of peachy pink blush. There's not really any shimmer or glitter. It's got kind of a satiny finish, but not really. It's more matte. But you, if you look at it closely, you can kind of see a little bit of shimmer, but it really doesn't show up like that on the cheeks. What you're seeing is my highlight. I love this blush, I love this color. It's such a standard, like, really put together blush color. So it's one that I could reach for every day and be satisfied. So definitely one, the whole line is really nice, very pigmented, I guess I could swatch it for you, huh? Um, very pigmented, really, really nice, but this is just happens to be my favorite color. They stay on all day long. Another old favorite I'll just mention briefly, because I talk about it a lot, is the Elf Flawless Finish Foundation. I traveled with, um, on our little baby moon, we um, vlogged on our vlog channel, which I will link below. Um, we vlogged, we were in Disney World, then we went on a cruise, and then we went back to Disney World. This is the only foundation I brought, and I just love this stuff. This is in the shade Porcelain. I actually think it might weirdly be a little bit too dark for me right now. As I was putting it on, I was kind of seeing that. I'm like, oh. Anyway, um, but it's got SPF of 15, it's oil-free. I just love this stuff. It gives perfect medium to full coverage stays on all day, it looks really nice on the skin. I just, I adore it and I love that it's got a pump. Another product, the e.l.f. Hydrating Primer. I love this stuff. It's absolutely on par, it's got a pump. Um, it's absolutely on par with every other hydrating primer I've ever used. I think this one does kind of have a leg up in a way though because it's hydrating but it also has that kind of velvety feel. So it does both. I feel like a lot of hydrating primers are just hydrating but they don't necessarily hold on to your foundation a lot. This one does both, and that's why I'm so surprised more people don't talk about it. It's It really is kind of in a world of its own, and I think that's really neat. So definitely, they e.l.f. sells a lot of different primers. This is my favorite one for exactly the reasons I just stated. Uh, another quick mention, the makeup removing pen. I mention every year when I do this video, I use it to clean up winged liner really quickly. It's awesome. It's a couple bucks. I just, every few months, I just replace it. Um, and a lot of you guys have asked how I keep it clean. Honestly, I just, you know, I use it to clean it up and then like with a rag or whatever you have with you, like I always have a different rag that I just wash all the time. I have a big, I just bought a big old pack of rags basically. Um, I just wipe it off and it usually comes right off. So if you do it pretty quickly, most of it will come off and it'll last longer that way. And you can also pull it out and turn it around and get a little more use. It's not the chisel tip, but it'll still work. It still has that makeup remover kind of solution in it. So love this stuff. I've bought that a million times. Another thing I use from time to time um, is their acne fighting gel. I haven't used it in a while now that I'm pregnant. Salicylic acid. I'm, I don't know, with anything like that, I'm a little bit more leery as I'm learning more and I've got a lot to learn about what to use and not to use. Um, but I don't really use this right now, but it's just a quick salicylic acid treatment for zits. If that works well for you, I mean, it's you know, it is what it is. It's not a super high concentration, but just a quick thing, especially if you're traveling and you want to have something, it's perfect. Other things I've loved over the years, this is their um, cream blush and bronzer duo. This is amazing. Honestly, the way I apply it, I'll just, you can use a stipple brush. I'll even use just like a beauty sponge, any beauty sponge, dip it like, especially in the bronzer, that's my favorite side. Um, and um, I'll just dip it in there lightly and then just pat that bronzer into the bronzery areas of my face. Looks flawless, stays on all day. It's amazing. Um, and it's surprisingly easy. Don't be intimidated because I was for the longest time by cream products until I started just using my beauty sponge for everything. It's so much easier. It's so much more foolproof. It looks so much more natural on the skin instead of like a, a powder. It's easier to blend together and then it sets and you're done. Blush I don't use as much, it's quite 
pigmented, maybe a little bit too much so. I wish this bronzer came in like a full pan. I would love that. Please, Elf, make that, please. I remember being on like an Elf, um, I went on one brand trip with them, and I remember talking to one of the like um, main people there, and I said, hey, I have an idea. Can we take your duos that you guys make, like all your blush bronzers, can we take the bronzers and make it a full pan of bronzer? Kind of reminiscent of like the NARS, you know, the NARS bronzers are like that full pan. I was like, could we do that? Like, can you guys do that? I would love that. Because I love their blushes, but I like having them separate. I don't know why I don't like things together. I like blushes separate, bronzer separate. I'm weird like that. Um, and I wanted like their bronzers, but I want a full pan of it. Like, how hard would that be? I was like, you could charge like six bucks. Like, I'm telling them everything I think they should do. They were like, oh, I like that idea. But then they never did it. I'm like, okay, well, I think it's an awesome idea. <laughs> Same. Anyway, so this is actually their matte blush duo. Totally a bronzer for me. And then this, I mean, it's in soft and subtle. This I don't really use for anything. It's like an orangey light color. It could work if you have a deeper, more yellow skin tone, maybe. Um, but I do like this kind of bronzery shade. Again, they're not swatching very well. It is very subtle, but I do like putting this just as like my blush bronzer. Like, I'll grab this and just do that. I don't need both a bronzer and blush when I use it. Do I think you need to run up and buy this? No, I think it's kind of a weird color combination to be quite candid. Something that I surprised, that, well, this is more of a meh product. This is their waterproof gel eyeliner pencil. It can look really black, but sometimes like it'll get too smudgy. So if you want a more smudgy black liner, I think you'd like it. But if you're trying to be more precise, it's kind of difficult with this. Um, Cause it's not, it's one you sharpen, but it's got that really hard edge that I feel like no sharpener works very well with if you have a recommendation. It can be really black, but sometimes like I'll like, for example, today, I tried to use it to tight line and I just couldn't get it to like stick on my eyelid. It was really odd, but then when I swatch it on my hand, it looks super black. So it's just kind of a meh product. I think it's actually pretty good, but just sometimes when I'll use it, I'm like, uh, like it's not doing exactly what I want it to do. So I wouldn't say stay away from it because I do think it's pretty darn black, but it's just kind of wishy-washy, I guess. Product I did really like. This is their e.l.f. Oh my gosh. It just says pretty pink please, and it doesn't say at all what it is. Um, it's just kind of like a clear gloss, but it's got a little tint to it. Um, it's just comfortable. Do I think it's something you need to run out and buy? No. I mean, it's just kind of a tinted gloss, but if that's what you're looking for, go for it. Now, you have to like this kind of an applicator too, um, and I know a lot of people like it. Some people don't. Um, it is what it is, but it really ends up coming more as a clear gloss with a slight tint. It's okay. So I like it, but I'm not gonna like go out and buy more colors because they wouldn't be that different and I don't feel that strongly about it. Um, but one I do feel strongly about is their like lip oils. This is a Naked Kiss. It's my favorite one. These just have this really nice kind of oily feel to them. Um, they end up, I mean, they don't swatch pretty because they really are more of a tint in oil. Um, so they don't look super even when you do that, but when you put it on your lips and kind of rub your lips together, it's just such a comfortable feel, way more comfortable than a standard gloss. And I feel like it's doing something a little bit better for my lips than a standard gloss. So that's why I would really recommend any of their lip oils. So next up is this little uh, Sculpting Silk Eyeshadow Trio. This is in Rosé All Day. I literally have like three makeup products from three different brands that are called Rosé All Day. I think that's kind of funny. Like I think Wet n Wild had one, this is one, and the Physicians Formula has one called Rosé All Day. And they're all very different products. Like the Physicians Formula one is called Rosé All Day and it's a serum, you know? <laughs> it's just funny. Um, anyway, beautiful. Really, really good quality shadows. Now, you could totally get a complete look out of this. I've worn this look. Um, with like the shimmer on the lid, this in the outer corner and liner, and then this kind of all throughout the crease to blend it all together. It's really pretty. Um, so if you found a trio that you really were drawn to, I'd say definitely. I think that this formula might be nicer than like their Mad for Matte formula, which is kind of interesting. Really, really impressive. A dud. This is the e.l.f. Volume Plumping Mascara. Guys, I'm still on the hunt. It just didn't do anything. Like I felt like it kind of clumped them together and that was the volumizing portion of it, but it didn't look flattering. Like I don't mind lashes looking a little bit clump, not clumpy, but you know, thick and black. Like it's obvious that I'm wearing mascara. I don't mind that. But I just felt like this kind of clumped them all together and it added a little volume, but not in the way I like. So again, just kind of underwhelmed by it. 
I know a lot of you guys recommended like the mineral one. I'll have to try that one soon. For holographic duos, I just didn't like. Some people really liked these. Um, they sent me these and then I think I bought one. So I had like two of one of these shades. They might swatch okay, but they just don't look nice on my skin. Like they looked kind of powdery. They looked very fake. I mean, obviously all highlighter is fake. Um, so that was Siren's Call. This is Blue Lagoon. Um, I just felt like these were kind of powdery and cheap feeling. Um, this one is Mermaid Tail. I don't know. I just was underwhelmed. If you're like dying to try this kind, maybe, but it was just okay. Hey, that kind of created a rainbow effect though. That's pretty. Another product that I really like. Now this is really oily and of course the name of it's not on there. It just is illuminating. Really oily highlight and so you have to put it on underneath your foundation. And so I really love the way this looks is so pretty. I've tried to kind of tap it on top. Here, let me try. And it will kind of work, but sometimes it can mess with the foundation underneath it. And that's when I'm like, ah, but like if I really blend it out and then get a little bit and tap it on, it will work. Um, it's really pretty. It really is. Oh, geez, Louise. Um, but it can look like a lot if you're not careful, unless that's what you want. So it's a really pretty one. I really like it, but I, I have to be really like picky about how I use it. And that makes me feel like, uh, but I do, I think it's gorgeous on. So those are all of the products, my best and worst. I've certainly tried more over the years, but I do declutter a lot just if I'm not using or if I just felt like eh, about it. I hope that you enjoyed this kind of video. If you did, definitely give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you would. And I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye.